Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to the 7th Autumn 2023 update from Gaz Weather Feed. So here we go again, trying to bring you more autumn data. And this week we're doing a QBO special. This is our QBO special, so I should get something back for you in a moment. Just to say that the first video release today was our 6th MVP weather forecast. We've got a shortened Gaz Weather Feed Sunday roundup, just looking at things like sea service temperature, omni activity, etc, etc. No weather included with that because we're going to be doing the weather at 6 p.m. with our live stream. So at 6 p.m. we're going to be live streaming the 10th 14 there. And if that wasn't enough, we can have loads and loads and loads and loads and loads and loads, 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 loads of long range in that as well. So it's an epic day of content at Gaz Weather today. If you could wish to do so, please like, share, subscribe. If you show us doing that, don't get to ding my bell and you'll be notified when we release content, live stream, community posts, etc, etc. Thank you so much everyone for doing that. Thank you, Shadow Richard for our amazing autumn updates. Give them a two. We've got two gifts this week. Of course, last week we named the fox and the owl, but this week I'll give them one. On this week we're going to be naming the bird. Now, I think, I think that's a blackbird. To be honest, I'm not very good with bird species. Uh, <laughs> I have been a little bit caught out before on bird species, but I think that's a blackbird. So let's assume it is. I'm sure someone will come correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. And uh, let's say we're going to name a blackbird. So if you've got a name for our lovely little bird there on gift number two, then please uh, post away in the comments. And at the beginning of Wednesday's live stream, we will uh, put all the names on name picker and, uh, um, and we'll name the bird on gift number two. Two. Thank you so much, Richard, for our amazing autumn updates, Give And thank you so much to Shryan as well for getting all the gear together. Thank you so much to Shryan. We're on hashtag Team Gav. Working away for us once again. Thank you so much to Shryan. And thank you so much to Rich. Right, let's have a look then. So we're going to start off here. This is from uh, NASA. And uh, this is showing the individual phases of the QBO back to 2020. So, what you have to think of with this, these are the layers of the atmosphere. Um, right at the top, we've got the stratosphere at 10 HPA. This is the boundary level of the atmosphere that's called the troposphere from 30 to 50 HPA. This is the level of the atmosphere where weather itself is taking place. And of course, we go further down towards the uh, surface down here. So, the uh, sandy colour area here, this, this this uh, gold coloured area, that is the last westerly phase of quasi biennial oscillation. Before that, we've got the last easterly phase of the QBO, which is this blue green area just here. You see how this works that we get these phases starting at the top in the stratosphere and then descending down to the troposphere. Well, right at the very edge of the uh, chart, you can see that we have now got the next phase of the Eastly QBO descending. So this is our uh, Eastly QBO phase that we're entering into now, uh, starting again in the stratosphere at the top of the atmosphere and moving down from the uh, stratosphere into the troposphere. Hasn't yet quite reached 50 HPA, but is in the 30 HPA boundary level, and we will be in an ECQBO through this autumn, and uh, that will carry on into winter as well, by the way. So uh, we are very simply going to be looking at uh, autumns with a deepening phase of the easterly QBO. And the first one of those, so let's do that, the first one of those is uh, 1958. This has been shown up quite a lot in our autumn update so far. This is an anti-cyclonic autumn with high pressure centred close to the UK across much of Northern Europe. It does have a wet September, I believe, in 1958, but the rest of the autumn is relatively dry. 1960 must be leading uh, the years for this year's autumn updates. It's shown up pretty much every week, I think. It's back again for de uh, deepening ECQBO autumns. This is a very, very wet autumn with below average heights across much of northern uh, Western Europe and into the Atlantic as well. It does have a bit of a blocking signal, but the main thing with that autumn, exceptionally wet. We've got the autumn of 1962 with a deepening phase of the ECQBO, deepening ECQBO. This is a drier but colder autumn with higher pressure centred over and just to the west of the uh, country, often bringing the wind from a northerly uh, type direction, varying between northwesters, northeasters, and northerlies. Um, 
it is the season. That's just before the daddy of Carl Winter. Um, and there's not much sign of that, actually. So there's, there's no real blocking within the high latitudes during this autumn, which perhaps is a bit surprising. You will probably expect to see some blocking in the season immediately before the coldest winter since 1740, the daddy of cold winter 263, but there's no, no real sign of it in the autumn analogue. It is quite a cool autumn, though, and by the time you get into November, actually, things are getting quite cold already. 1965 has some higher pressure to the north, lower pressure is to the south. That's quite a wet autumn for more southern parts of the country, perhaps a little bit drier further north. 1967, lots of deepening easy QBO autumns in the 60s, interestingly. 1967 is an Atlantic-driven, mild but quite wet autumn, pressure in off the Atlantic. 1972 is much drier with an anti-cyclone signal placing high pressure over and slightly to the west of the coast, quite a, quite a quiet autumn uh, there. 1976, very different. This is a really wet autumn, exceptionally wet, making up for the drought that begins, of course, in, uh, at the end of 1974 and is still going on in the summer of 76. Long, long drought spanning uh, two years. And uh, we get to the autumn, the drought breaks. And by the end of this autumn, actually, by, by Christmas of 76, we've pretty much made up the rainfall deficit over the previous two years. That is how phenomenally wet the autumn of 1976 was. Overall, it's a mild but very wet autumn that we have in 76, following the daddy of hot summers. 1981 is also quite a wet autumn with lower pressure to our north and higher pressure down to the southwest. First 10 days of September, relatively dry and quite warm, but then it turns very wet for the rest of September. September 1981 was a very wet month. And uh, then the rest of the autumn is cold and wet in October and very unsettled in November too. And November has some unusual tornadic activity, interestingly. So that's quite an interesting autumn in 1981. 1983 is drier and quieter, it has above average heights, high pressure through the west of Europe, lower pressure is away to the uh, north and northeast of the country. Um, does have a wet September again, actually, in 1983, but after that, the rest of the autumn is uh, quieter and milder. 1986 is a classic westerly type autumn with low pressure to the north, high pressure to the south, the wind's coming in off the Atlantic. You don't get it from that analogue, but it does have an unusually cold September in uh, 1986. The last time you have a September CT under 12 degrees in the 11s was actually in 1986, which is very cold for for September. Uh, and so it has quite a bit of frost as well in uh, September 1986, and usually early sort of ground frost anyway. The rest of the autumn is generally uh, mild though, and, uh, and pretty nondescript with the usual mix of drier and uh, wetter period. The interesting, the interesting in that autumn is definitely with September. 1991 is the complete flip of that, with low pressure again to the north, high pressure out to west. This has a dry and warm September, and then the rest of the autumn again, rather unsettled and nondescript. There is some quite cold weather, I think, in October of 1991. Uh, then we've got 2000, again, with a deepening phase of the ECQBO. So this one is extraordinarily wet from around the middle of September to, like, the first week or so of December. There is a prolonged, extraordinarily wet spell of weather. It was like the Atlantic kind of decided to tip its entire contents um, over the top of the UK. And I, if anybody remembers the autumn of 2000, you will remember how it just kept raining and raining and raining and raining and raining. And, uh, and, and yeah, there was floods galore across many parts of the country. Extraordinarily wet in uh, the autumn of 2000. And at times quite stormy as well, especially so later on in that autumn. I've got 2009 next. This one's quite a strange autumn, and you don't really get much from the analogue, actually. It has lower pressure up to the north overall and high pressure down to south-southwest. The thing with this autumn is that it has an exceptionally dry, so talked about exceptionally wet before, has an exceptionally dry uh, September and particularly October. Uh, there is kind of like a drought that goes on through this autumn from September to October, and then at the end of October, beginning of November, it all flips around, and we get a, a, get a very, very wet uh, November with, uh, with with quite a bit of flooding in some places. It's a mild, quite warm uh, autumn, 
but the main interest with that one is in the, is in the unusual precipitation pattern. Uh, we've got 24 team next with a deepening ECQBO. This one has high pressure towards Scandinavia. Low pressure is out in the Atlantic. Winds often coming up from a southerly direction. That's a very warm autumn. We're having 24 team. Very, very warm Halloween. Uh, I think it might still be the warmest Halloween on record. And then we've got 2017. So this one is a cooler autumn with below average heights to our northeast, above average heights to our west southwest, and winds often coming in from a west or a northwesterly direction. Uh, so in 2017, we get a wetter September, interestingly. Um, and then we get uh, quite a warm but uh, mixed October. Of course, in October 2017, famously, we get the remains of Hurricane Ophelia that turns the skies a Martian orange. Uh, and then a mix of weather for November, but some cold snaps in November 2017. Overall, it's a slightly cooler autumn compared to what we've had, you know, in a lot of years. Haven't been many cold autumns, as I keep saying, since 1993. And this wasn't a particularly cold autumn either, but it was a little bit cooler compared to a lot of them through the... Um, through the 20 teens, I suppose. And then finally, we've got 2021. The last time we had a deepening ECQBO autumn was in uh, 2021. Missed one with higher pressure across West Europe and into the Atlantic. So this is rather warm, mild, dry, anticyclonic autumn that we get in uh, 2021. Right, putting all of that together then, miss out all September's combined are looking with a deepening ECQBO. Wet signal for the south, below average heights into southern parts of the country, blocking around Iceland. So again, there could be years that deviate with this. 1991, for example, had a warm and dry uh, September. 1986 was cold and dry. So as ever, there are years that deviate. Not 2009 was exceptionally dry as well. Years that deviate as ever within the package. But overall, averaging it all out, it is a wet signal for those Septembers. And seemingly, particularly so, for more southern parts of the country, interestingly. All Octobers combined, a more typical pattern, with low pressure around ice and green and high pressure around the Azores. That's a very westerly signal. Could again be quite unsettled, but definitely like a milder type Atlantic driven pattern for the Octobers. And then all Novembers combined are also unsettled overall with low pressure in the northwest Europe. The difference with this one though is that there's a bit of high pressure in the central part of the Atlantic and the low pressure is a little bit further eastwards. And so on average, we could be bringing in some uh, northerly winds at times. So perhaps a slightly colder signal for those Novembers. And some of them might even have a little bit of wintering potential. But generally, it's just quite a very, uh, quite an unsettled signal, not only for the Novembers, but for the autumns. If we put all of the autumns together, this is how it comes out. So this is the final analogue. Uh, for deepening ECQBO autumns, all autumns combined. It's an unsettled signal, not really a surprise given what we've just seen um, with low pressure across the north and the west of Europe centred really over the top of the UK and Ireland. And so, yes, quite clearly, it's a signal for a wettish autumn. Probably not overly cold, there's no particular blocking signal there. So uh, I would imagine a lot of those autumns are quite mild, but also rather wet at times. And we're done. So if you enjoyed this 7th Autumn 2023 update, QBO special from Gaz Webbies, then please, if you'd like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much, everyone, for doing that. Don't forget to ding the bell. You'll be notified when we uh, release content, including long-range updates. Uh, thank you so very much, everybody, for doing that. Uh, so we are at the busy end of our autumn updates. We're going through the more pivotal data uh, now. Last week we looked at solar. This week we're looking at uh, the QBO. Won't be long before we're doing our ain't so special either. I wouldn't have thought uh, Shrian, get to work on that. <laughs> no, no, don't need to worry about that yet, Shrian. Um, but uh, yes, so thank you so much everybody for sticking with the autumn updates. When we get to the 27th of, uh, of August, so just over, uh, just under a month, then we will be releasing the Gaz Webby's Autumn 2023 um, broadcast. Thank you, Shona Richer, for the gift. Thank you, Shona Shrian, for getting all of those years together for us. Thank you, Shona Richard Schwartz, Shrian, Brianna, hashtag Team Gab, working away for us as always. We're going to be back with our shortened Gaz Webby's Sunday Roundup in a little while, and to pair with live streaming our 10 to 14 day and loads of long range at 6 pm. I shall see you later for that for this seventh autumn 2023 update from Gareth Webbins. That's all now and thanks so much.